All right, guys, welcome back. We are now on our unit notes 5 2 for angle relationships. We are going to take what we learned yesterday with all of our different angle types, and now we're going to start applying our angle relationships. Okay, we can use our knowledge of angles formed by the parallel lines and transversals to find missing measurements. In the following examples, we will be writing um, and solving equations to help us find missing information. So looking at example one, it says Elm Street is parallel to Oak Street and Cedar Drive cuts diagonally across the two streets. So now we need to find the measure of each marked angle. So here we see that these <clears throat> angles are corresponding angles because they are in that ma in those matching corners. So angles in the same relative position um, or angles that are in matching corners. And if we look at this here from yesterday, it says they are congruent, meaning they are going to be equal to each other. And because they are going to be equal to each other, we've got two different equations um, to solve for our angles, but there's an x in each of these equations. However, Knowing that they're congruent, meaning that one equation is going to be on one side of our equal sign and the other equation is going to be on the other side of our equal sign. So here we have one angle and it's going to be 3x plus 103. Okay, With it being congruent, that means it's going to equal our second equation, which is for up the, uh, in between Oak Street and Elm Street, which is 9x plus 61. Okay, so these two are going to equal each other. So now we need to work through and solve for x so that we can then plug x into those equations to find those uh, angle measurements. Okay, so here we have our equations. We've got x's on both sides. We don't need to do any simplifying on both sides, but we do need, uh, so we have to combine like terms, but we do need to get our, our x's on the same team, right? Remember that? We had x's on the wrong, on opposite teams. That's not how we work. So we need to get them on the same side. So to do that, I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. That leaves us on the left-hand side. We have a positive 103 is going to equal 6x on this side plus 61 because those end up canceling each other out. Now we're going to move our 61 over, so we're going to subtract 61 from both sides. And here we have x equals 42. No, nope, I'm sorry, wrong side. 103 minus 61 is equal to 42, and that is equal to 6x. Now we're going to divide by 6 on both sides, and that gives us x equals 7. But remember, we're not done, because now and draw a line here. Now we have to plug in our x values. So if x equals 7, we're given our first equation of 3x plus 103. Um, we're going to plug that 7 in, so 3 times 7 plus 103. Now we can do the math of 21 plus 103. We add this together, we're going to get a value of 124. Let's make that for two prettier here. Of 124 degrees. Now, we have already established that this these are congruent angles, meaning they are equal, right? But let's go ahead and check our work just to be safe. So now we have 9x plus 61. We're going to plug that 7 in for our x. So we have 63 plus 61, and that is in fact equal to 124 degrees, and they are equal, meaning this angle right here is also going to be 124 degrees, okay? We've used what we know about solving equations. We've used what we know about um, angle relationships to help us find those angle measurements, right? Now let's continue on. Um, it says, if a, say a pair of parallel lines is cut by a transversal, we need to set up and solve the equations to find marked angle measurements, okay? Um, so here we have an interior angle and an interior angle. So both of these are interior and they're on the same side of our uh, transversal. So we come down to same side interior angles and they are going to be supplementary. Remember, supplementary means it is equal to 180 degrees. So we know that our equation here 
is going to be equal, let me erase this because I don't see it over, is going to be equal to 180, okay? So we have our first equation of 3x plus 7 is going to add, be added to 10x plus 17, and those combined are going to equal 180. Well, we can go back here, we can draw our X boxes if we need to, you may not, and that's okay too. So in my X box, I have a three and I have a positive 10. In my blank box, I have a seven and I have a 17. So now my new equation is going to be 13X plus 24 is going to equal 180. Now I'm going to solve for x by subtracting 24 from both sides, and I end up with 13x equals 156, divide both sides by 13, and I end up with x equals 12. So my value of x is 12. Am I done? No, I am not. I have to now plug in my x value into my angle equation so that I can find the precise measurements of each angle. Now again, these are not congruent, so they're not going to be equal to each other, but when combined together, they should equal 180, because that is what supplementary means. All right, so if we're going to pl plug these x values in, I have 3x plus 7, with my x is 12, I have 3 times 12 plus 7, I can do the math to get um, the answer of 43. 3 times 12 is 36. You add 7 to that and you get 43. Now, I can go back and do my other one. Now I've got 10x plus 17. So 10 times 12 plus 17. I get a total of 137 because 10 times 12 is 120. Add that 17 to get 137, meaning my angle measurements are going to be 43 and 137. Now, we always want to check it. So 43 plus 137 is going to be 180. So I have done that work correctly. All right, let's check there so we have room. Okay, so now we're gonna continue on. Now we're given two angles again. This time they're on um, the outside corners, okay, for parallel lines. Um, and they're on the same side of our transversal. So now we're looking at our outside same, but same side. So external, same side, exterior angles, and they're supplementary here. So meaning they are equal to 180 degrees. So if my equation is going to end in 180 degrees, I have the equation of the angle of 11 x minus 9. We're going to add that to 7 x minus 9, and that's going to equal 180. So now let's go ahead and do our X boxes if you need it. I'm gonna go back to the green color though, make it easier on our eyes to see. So our X box and our blank box, my X box is gonna have a positive 11 and a positive seven. And then my blank box is gonna have a negative nine and a negative nine. So now my rewritten equation is going to be 18X minus negative nine minus nine is 18 is negative 18 so it's gonna be a minus 18 equals 180. now i've got my equation equation ready i can start solving for x i'm going to add 18 to both sides i end up with 18 x equals 198 divide by 18 x is equal to what do we get 11. Okay, now my value of x is 11. But remember, I'm not done. That just found my value of x. Now I have to go and plug it in in both of the, both of the equations to verify that they both equal, um, when we write out the equation, right they're equal to 180. So let's plug in our blue angle of 11x, 11 times x, which is 11 times 11 minus 9. And that is going to be 121 minus 9. That is going to equal 112. 
And then I have seven times 11, seven times X minus nine. And that is going to equal 68 because seven times 11 is 77 minus nine is 68. So my two angle measurements are going to be 112 and 68. And once again, we can plug those in to double check that they added together are in fact going to equal 180. And so we are good. All right, last one that we are looking at today um, is we have interior angles, okay? But they are on opposite sides of our transversal. So let's go back and take a look and see what they're gonna be. They're opposite, okay? So they're alternate interior, meaning they're congruent. They're gonna be equal to each other. So now our equal sign is then going to be moved. So here, our equation is going to look like negative eight X plus eight is going to be congruent to, it's going to be equal to the other equation of negative six X plus 20. Now we can start solving for our X value. Um, we don't have to do any simplifying, but we do need to get our X's on the same side. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my eight X to both sides. Uh, to move it over, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna add it to both sides because it's a negative eight X. So I'm gonna add it to both sides. Now I've got eight equals a positive two X plus 20. Now I'm gonna subtract 20 from both sides. And I have um, negative 12 is going to equal two X. Divide negative 12. My X value is then going to be a negative six. But once again, I am not done. I have to now take my X value and plug it into the equations for each angle. So if my first equation was negative eight times X, which is now negative six plus eight, we can do the math to find that that is equal to 56. Negative eight times negative six is a positive 48 plus eight, add eight to that is a positive 56. So now I can look at my other equation of negative six X, which is times a negative six plus a 20 is equal to 56 because negative six times negative six is 36. And then we, is a positive 36 and we add our 20 and we get 56. So these are in fact the same, they're equal, they are congruent. So now our angles are, our angle measurements are 56 degrees and 56 degrees. And that is how we're gonna use our notes from yesterday with all of those definitions, all the different types of angles um, with our knowledge about measurement angles to find different angle measurements. You are gonna continue this. You're gonna continue to work on that assignment with your table partner. Um, check in with the teachers to make sure that you are getting your tickets and that you're understanding the concept. Do your best, be your best, and I will see y'all tomorrow.